Hi everyone, ChatGPT is here and everyone is raving about it. I tried to use ChatGPT for what I do best, learn and teach. So can you learn a new programming language with ChatGPT and can you learn it better? And if you want to learn a new language with ChatGPT, how would you do it? What would be the prompts? How would you interact with it? Let's see in this video. So let's try to learn Kotlin with ChatGPT. And how do we want to learn Kotlin with ChatGPT? We'll first ask ChatGPT to say, hey, can you teach me Kotlin? And let's see what it says. Of course, Kotlin is a programming language, you know, a modern programming language that is designed to be concise. Uh, okay, it's for Android. Once you have the Kotlin compiler installed, you can start writing Kotlin code. Here's an example. Hello world program in Kotlin. Okay, in this program, fun is short for function. Okay, and main is the name of function that is executed when you run the program. The print ln function is used to print the string. One of the great features of Kotlin is that it is very concise. Here's an example of how you can use Kotlin to create a list of numbers. In this code, val is short for value and list of achha, numbers. Okay is a function that creates a list of numbers the numbers variable is assign the list of number object or also supports oh my god so this is too much so so i'll say this is too much can you show a small program so a mini program to me first and then explain it and then ask me to write a simple similar program and check if that's right introduce only one concept at a time treat me as a complete newbie let's see what it does sure let's start with a simple kotlin program that uses variables and basic arithmetic very nice so says well num 110 num 25 sum num 1 plus num 2 difference product quotient this is great because when you start with something like this you type a lot and when you type a lot you start getting the hang of it so they say this program declares four variables assigns them values using basic arithmetic operations plus minus multiply and slash operators are used for addition subtraction multiplication and division respectively it's used to print the results of the arithmetic operations to the console now let's have you try to write a similar program now this is also giving me a program so very nice it says write a program that calculates the area and parameter of a rectangle with a length of 8 and width of 5 the area of rectangle is calculated by multiplying its length and by twist so it's saying it's a product and the parameter is calculated by adding the length of all four sides okay so i have to write a program so what i'll do is i'll say function main See, I like that it has asked me a program which the answer is already given on top, kind of. So let me answer this. It says, great job, your program looks correct. To make it complete, you add print. Uh, print line statements to print the results of the calculations. Here's an example, which is very nice. In this program, we have added print line statements to print the results of the area and perimeter calculations. Are well done. You have successfully written your first Kotlin program. Wow. So, Chad GPT taught me how to write my first Kotlin program using variables and basic arithmetic. Let me know if you have any more questions or there anything else you would like to learn. Yes. Introduce one more new concept. Explain. Show me an example. And also give me, and also give me a question to solve. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so it's saying, uh, so let's introduce a new concept in Kotlin. In this case, let's talk about conditional statements. Okay, so let's learn conditional statements in Kotlin. If Good attempt, but the second if statement should actually be an else if. That's what I was saying. I it did not teach me else if, but it gave me a question uh, about that, which is still okay to learn. You can make those mistakes. Uh, well done. You successfully used an if statement to solve a problem in Let me know if you have any more questions. Yes, yes, I want to learn more. Yes, I want to learn more. Teach me one more new concept. I like how you are teaching me from the very basics. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep this pace going. Let's see what it teaches me next. So it says, great, let's move on to another concept in Kotlin, loops. Okay, loops are for repeated blocks. Okay, while loop is used to repeat a block of code, why certain conditions is true. In this program, we declare variable i, assign it to the value of 1. Okay, the for loop is for so it a range of values. So this is this is what is different in Kotlin. It iterate over a range of values or a collection of objects. Okay, this is nice. Uh, for i in 1 to 5. In this program, we use a for loop to print the value of i to the console as it iterates to the range from 1 to 5. Now it's your turn to try it out. Here's the problem for you to solve. Write a program that calculates the sum of 4, 10 positive integers using a loop. Wow. So it 
beautifully what it did was it it took a very basic program for the explanation uh, and gave me a harder program for writing it like it did not teach me how to add but what it is doing is it is building on what we learned earlier so we learned how to do addition previously and then now it's asking me to use that in a loop so let me try that i don't know if i will be able to do it Good effort. How there's small mistakes. Since sum is declared using the val keyword, it is read-only variable and cannot be assigned a new value. Therefore, you should declare sum using the val keyword instead. Acha. And who will teach me that? Uh, did you teach me that? Yes, it did. It did teach me that. That val i equals one, and the value when it changes, it says val. And I think uh, it failed to mention that in the text. So there are mistakes, but that's okay. When you make mistakes in programming, that's how you learn. So I, I learned something. How to solve this? Okay. Give me one more question until I do it right. Chalo, let me take. So this is how I learn programming. If I'm learning a new language and if I'm making a mistake, what I do is, if I'm making mistakes, I take one more question. I like Chat GPT a lot doing this because it can give me a similar difficulty level question. So I really like how it's teaching me. And also the prompts I'm using is something which comes with experience. Uh, how to learn something, right? So let's see. Write a program that calculates the factorial of a given number. Okay, the factorial of a number is the product of all positive integers from one to that number. For example, the factorial of five is five four three two one, which is equal to one twenty. Once you have written your program, post it here and I will check if it's correct. Okay, let me try. This is. this again it has given me a difficult one if i was teaching programming i wouldn't have given this question before teaching a lot of things so let me say var i right and i need to increment the value of i Now, if I was learning programming for the first time, this would have been very tough. But since I know a language from before, I know how to, you know, form this logic in my head. But if I was, if I didn't know how to form the logic, I wouldn't give a beginner this program too early. But that's okay. And say, good job. Your program looks kind of. To make it more flexible, you can replace the hard code value of five with a variable so that the user can input any number. And now it is teaching me one more new concept, all by its own. I love this. So it's saying, "Hey, why don't you read it? And how do you read it from the user? You have to do read line and then convert it to int. And what I want now is read line. See, it's saying then we use a read line function to read the user input and convert into an integer using the to int function. After that, we use a while loop to calculate the factorial of the number. We initialize factorial to one and i to one, and then multiply factorial by. So we did this. We initialize factorial to one, i to one, and says i less than equals to number. Uh, and I don't know why it says not not. So I will ask this. I think this is this is where Chat GPT will shine, yar. This is amazing. So I don't understand a few things from the program, and I can actually ask Chat GPT why why it did it, why it did this. So let me let me try that. So it's like having a personal personal programming trainer for you, right? Why did you use the question mark, right, in this line? So in essence, what it is trying to say is, you use this question mark operator to make sure that the next function is called only if, only if the value is not null. So I can also say, ah, I understand this. I I understand. I see this in JavaScript as well because we have that. You will say, okay, safe operator in many other programming languages. Right? Question mark and dot operator. It's called the optional chaining operator. So now what I'm doing? This is another way of learning where you try to match whatever you have learned before with what you are learning right now, so that you form a web. Now I remember. Okay, it's optional chaining. I was not able to remember the word optional chaining. It's very similar to optional chaining, but here it is called safe call operator. Right? So safe call operator, optional chaining. These are just names. You will remember once you practice more, you start remembering that. But I also didn't understand one more piece, like why the extra, why the extra not signs, why. there we could only use it when you are which is amazing and and i have used this in typescript so i say i see this is something i have used in typescript as well so let me see what oh yes yes the not null assertion operator is also available in typescript and other programming languages it's a convenient way to tell the compiler that you have absolutely certain that a nullable variable is not null and then you want to treat it as a non null variable let me ask again what happens if we don't use the not null ah so if we would have done it 
if you have if you have done it not if you if you wouldn't have said the not null it would have given a compiler error because it's a very safe programming language kotlin right it's not javascript it's not python that's why it has similarities to typescript so if i would have done that the program would be different the program would have to handle the number not equal to null and in that case we have to re reply with the factorial as one right that the factorial for the number one is one so that is extremely important i like that it is te teaching me the right ways to do things very early on and the other thing which we should actually love here is how i can go deep into everything so i love this kind of teaching i wish something like this existed when i started learning programming and now that i'm started starting to learn kotlin and i'm just trying this for the first time here i'm loving this because this is a kind of experience education would want it would want few things which you can see here one personal tutor so you can have your own pace adjusted two you can ask questions for each and every line which you don't understand three you can start from the very beginning you can also ask this knows this does not only knows kotlin it knows typescript it knows javascript it knows python so we can ask ha i have seen this in python as well what are the languages where i would have seen this so it helps me create that web when i am an experienced developer so i'm loving how i'm loving how to learn from from this i can ask this was great question this was what more concepts should i learn as a beginner and let me see what it says beginner functions arrays strings classes control flow if and when i have learned uh, if if when while for we learned there are just few concepts so if i if i want to do this i can do this whole day like like captain america we can do this whole day we can keep fighting but this is amazing how you can learn new things with chat gpt i'm using it to learn a lot of things i hope you see this and you start using chat gpt to learn more for every concept you can do this thing let me do a quick revision for you what can you do first thing is it gives you a lot so you can say can you give me a mini program first and ask me a question and then you try answering those questions as well and then you can say introduce one concept at a time bas ek se khao so then i said hey introduce one more new concept and show me an example and give me a question and then every time it does i would say yes and then i like i love the pace where it said this is wrong you should do it right and then when i when i did the factorial question it also showed me new things and when i asked about these pieces it told me about you know the not null operator and the uh, and the safe call operator so there are a lot of things which is which it is taking care of it is personalizing as per your need right and and i think if we keep doing it and i want to keep doing it if we keep doing it we can learn a lot uh, better from chat gpt because it's like having your own personal trainer and if you can lift uh, if you can lift 2 kg it will tell you very good 2 kg is well done can you lift 5 kg now and if you can do 5 kg you know very good can you do 7 and 1/2 kg now but if you are unable to lift 7 and 1/2 kg it will say okay okay no problem let's go back to 5 kg and increase the number of reps so that you, your muscles get stronger we will do 7 and 1/2 kg later so it's it's like having a personal trainer but with it does not have that understanding of a personal trainer so you need to be your own personal trainer in this case but it can give you those dumbbells it can help you lift it can tell you you know this your posture is not right don't jerk your hand all of those things it can tell you you just have to understand how to learn from it and i'm hoping to make more videos on this how to learn different frameworks and languages if you like this video do share subscribe and like and comment saying do you want more such videos on chat gpt